Don't get me wrong, I love normal bikes just as much as anybody else. Hell, this one for example is full 27.5 still and there's no reason to change that. Now I will say that there is an argument to be made here for the latest e-bike sales surge. E-bike sales in the past three years have hit 1.2 million units. That shows a massive shift in customer preference towards sustainable as well as affordable modes of transportation here in the United States. To further compound this, over the last three year period, the same period that e-bike sales have surged, we look at US auto sales dropping 18% from 2019 to 2023. And then that coupled with the fact that the price of an average new car averages somewhere around $49,000 according to Kelly Blue Book, that is insane. No wonder people are starting to look towards e-bikes and micromobility as their primary mode of transportation. Who can afford that? On the other hand, just this year, gas prices have averaged around $3.80 a gallon. Ridiculous, I know. Compared to an e-bike, which costs about $0.05 cents per mile to operate, I mean, given the choice and the weather's nice, I'm going to opt for the e-bike every single time. And look, I used to be the kind of person who would say, well, it's not about the miles per gallon, it's about the smiles per gallon. I currently drive a truck that's on a Camberg mid-travel kit with 35s, big V8, lots of power. It's a lot of fun, but it also doesn't do wheelies, and I have to worry about traffic lights, door dings, parking. I kind of think the bike is more fun in my opinion. And to top that off, the US Census Bureau just came out and said that 83% of Americans are now living in more urbanized areas, therefore leaving a very small percentage of the population who doesn't have access to bike trails, bike pathways, bike lanes, and isn't close enough to work to actually commute. In 1983, a study was done by the University of Michigan, and they actually concluded that adults under 30, 83% of them had their driver's license. In the year 2023, that same survey was conducted, and it actually found that only 59% of people under 30 had their driver's license. So that decline just shows the fact that driving a car these days really doesn't seem to be a priority for at least that percentage gap of the population. Now, in 2024, the average price of an e-bike, and keep in mind this is your commuter style e-bike, not your high-end e-mountain bikes. However, that average price was $1,600. Compare that to the $49,000 average new car price that we talked about earlier, you could literally get an e-bike for every day of the month, excluding February, you would just have one or two extra, for the same price as a new car. Let that sink in for a minute, and no wonder people are opting towards e-bikes and micromobility rather than cars. Makes a lot of sense. Now, if you really want to nerd out for a second, you can actually fit 12 e-bikes on average in the same size that a standard car takes up in a standard size parking spot. Now, imagine you have a two-car garage. Let's take that 49,000 average new car price that we talked about earlier, divide that across $1,600 for the average e-bike cost. That would give you 30 e-bikes. So in a two-car garage, you could fit 24, you would have six bikes that you would just need to figure out another place to store them. Guest room, closet, bathroom. It's a good problem to have in my opinion. I mean, too many bikes, is that actually an issue? The next big problem that e-bikes actually solve is gonna be traffic congestion. Now did you know that the average American spends about 60 hours per year not commuting, but just stuck in traffic? Let that sink in for a moment. 60 hours of your life, you could be watching more videos on this channel. Also, please subscribe while you're thinking about that. I would greatly appreciate it. Look, I completely understand that we've all probably heard the contrasting stories talking about how electric cars really aren't that efficient. However, whenever you put it into the perspective that e-bikes are three times more efficient than electric cars, it really starts to make sense. The average e-bike uses about 120 watt hours per mile compared to the average EV, which actually uses around 340. So three times more efficient, okay, now they start to make a lot more sense. To compound that further, you have the average cost to insure a car, which is around $1,800. Now compare that to the annual cost to insure an e-bike, which remains under 250 bucks. I mean, that's some pretty significant savings. Honestly, I could tell you all about how oil has reached up over $95 a barrel here in 2024. I could tell you about the fact that 76% of Americans are really concerned about climate change and looking for sustainable options. Or I could also tell you about the fact that the US transportation industry contributes to 28% of greenhouse gases. 
But in all honesty, I just think e-bikes are fun and I think a lot more people are gonna start looking at that as a cheaper option as compared to a car. I think they open up a huge amount of people to the opportunity to go cycling. And for commuting, it's brilliant if the weather's nice. We still haven't tackled that challenge yet, but I would imagine sometime in the near future, somebody will. Let me know your thoughts on all this down below in the comments section and tell me, would you consider shifting towards an e-bike or even getting one as a backup mode of transportation anytime in the next three to five years? As always, thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next video.